Hakashi. Hakashi. Agashi here. So today I'm going to review the ending of The Untamed. I reviewed with you guys from episode 1 to episode 5, so I'm going to be reviewed from episode 6 to episode 50 now. I know it's going to be a lot, but I will explain why it probably won't be a long review. It's because I just watch what I wanted to watch. That's just me. I watch what I want to watch and there's some useless stuff where I'm just like eh, you're boring, skip, 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 skip. So I just pay attention to the stuff I want to pay attention to. So I was introduced to this drama by my little cousin. She was in love with them and there was like the um, the comic drawing or something like that of them and they're called like the Grandmaster of Demo Demoic? cultivator or cultivation or something like that and so you know they finally turned this into a live action and so like i explained to you guys like she got like you know we got her a lot of stuff for her birthday and all that stuff like that and you know my sister is so in love with it she got a mug that is actually like the untamed the cartoon version of it and so it's just a black mug but those heating mug when it gets heated up and the picture shows up so she actually got that but yeah Anyway, so I'm going to continue from episode 6 to episode 50. I will try to make this review as short as I can. And spoiler alert, if you guys have not seen it, you know, um, this is going to be revealing some stuff for you guys. But um, if you guys want to watch this before you guys go and watch the drama, do go ahead and watch it and let me know what your thoughts are. And uh, if you want to go and jump and watch the drama, I know Chinese dramas can be so long and so it can be so tiring to watch. So I understand that some of you guys actually really like this review because it gives you guys whether you guys should watch it or not. And um, sorry in advance if I pronounce your name wrong. I've been like so having problems with my pronunciation nowadays so uh, my tongue is like twisting and all stuff like that so i'm sorry in advance for that but let's go ahead and jump right into it so for episode 6 to episode 9 right there from here on it flashes us back on uh 16 years ago when uh wei wuxian uh in his past of how everything started and it goes on for like until like episode 30 before we jump back to the original timeline so a uh, little you guys know ahead this is going to be explaining of the past so if you guys like you know want to be wondering like when do they go back into the future it's in episode 30 or something like that so we do get half of the drama of the past so um we get to see uh Wei Wuxin uh he was a part of the Yunmi uh Jiang sect st uh students who were trying to enter the Gushang Lang sect and they couldn't and they were able they weren't able to get in and Wei Wuxin who not how naughty he is he got in he gets punished by Lan Shang and you know they make him copy script books and writing stuff and you know he always like gets on La Shan's trying to get La Shan's attention and all this stuff like that and then we kind of like uh, we kind of get introduced into uh, Wing Chin and uh, Wing Nin so these two are brothers and sister and they are a family of medical doctors and they've been trying to cure Wing Nin like he has some medical problems and like there's something wrong with him but Wing Chin we re refuse to tell people about it and what's wrong with them and like they end up bumping into Wei Wuxin and they end up like you know getting entangled together and like you know this is where all the main characters are pretty much introduced to us you know Wei Wuxin, um, Jiang, Jiang Cheng and Jiang Liang and Lan Xiang, Wing Qing and Wing Neng so these six people are like kind of like the main people for us and then you know more stuff happen they go on journeys and stuff like that they meet water ghosts they get um attacked by it and then we get backstory of uh, Wei Wuxian's um, senior sister how she wish uh, senior sister Zhang Yang Zhang Yangli, she always wished for him to have a happy life and everything like that, you know. And so that's why he's always so cheerful and he's always the way he is because his senior sister, she always wished for him to be like that because that's how he always is. And then towards episode 8, we get Lang Shang. He's actually going to go find the missing piece of the yin iron and he doesn't want Wei Wuxian to tag along and Wei Wuxian 
knows about it and he ends up tagging along and then um as they are tagging along to find these missing pieces, we get Wing Chen. She's actually up to something, and and she doesn't want to get attached to uh, Wei Wu Xing and Lang Shang because she doesn't want the people she's working for to know about that she's actually friends with them. So there's actually the Wing family that um, she's from that they raised her, and this guy, uh, one of the family member, Wing Wing Chao, he's actually trying to get information and trying to get like you know. Uh, the Ying Iron and Ying Tiger, all stuff like that. So her that her family is trying to seek evil and bad stuff like that, and she's supposed to help them. But the fact is that she became friends with Wei Wuxin and Lan Xiang, and so and uh, Zheng Cheng, and then so she's kind of like doesn't want them to get in trouble, and she's always secretly like passing information to them so they're safe while she's still like putting a front to her side of the family that you know she's working for them. So she's actually these are not her family. You know, they're actually her family has passed away, so there's only her and her brother Wing Ning, and they are raised by Wing Chao. So they feel like they own like debt to them. So that's the only reason why they're um, actually, you know, just doing stuff for them. And then we get uh, Wing Chao. He actually awakens the Heaven Lady on purpose to attack Wei Wuxin and Lan Xing during their journey to finding the missing pieces. And this um, Heaven Lady was actually aiming at Lan Shang. And we find out that it's because he has like the pieces of the Yin Iron and the Wei family. You, they, what they do is they need to get that to put it on the Heaven Lady so that she stops absorbing human um, spirits. But because it was taken out now she comes out and she's like attacking and she can control stuff and all this stuff like that so there's like this this wing iron has been broken to pieces and it's all over the places and the wind channel fa the wing family they've been doing bad things with it and we get a lot of seed a lot of corpse and and um uh, what is it um like puppet human corpse being used and stuff like that so by the time we get to episode 11 to episode 15 right here, Lan Shang has already collected all the pieces to the Yin Iron already and he is returning back to his Gu Shang Lang sect. And uh, while he does that, uh, Wei Wu Sheng and Jing Chai, Jing Chai, oh my god, Chang Ch Jing Chang returns back to the Yu Ming Jing sect and when Lan Shang, Lan Shang gets on his way home, he gets ambushed and he uh, escapes because they're trying to take this uh, Yang iron from him. He escapes, he gets home and his place is under attack by the Wing family. And so, you know, he kind of has like no choice, you know. And uh, Wei Wu Xin and Jin, um, uh, Jin Chang returns home and they find out that Lan Shang, his people, has get, has got under attack. So they have to go back and help. So they actually go and they are uh, they find out that all these people are actually after the wing on uh, the Ying Iron and they need to go back and help them or else you know their sect is gonna get destroyed and everything. So this is when like you know the Wing family gets introduced a lot in these episodes to. The next couple episodes and they are really really evil they do a lot of evil stuff and they um you know they find out that wing ching this this is her her people and everything like that and she's pretty much being threatened to do stuff for them or wing ning is going to get killed or the next victim stuff like that so she's not evil she's being forced to do all these stuff and they take over like the gu shang lang sect and all this stuff like that and wei wu shen he he gets taken in as well him and uh jing uh, jing chung and you know Wei Wu Shen, they he just very he very doesn't care and he falls around, he does tricks and stuff like that. So he got thrown into the dungeon where he got attacked by beasts and he's almost like dead. And they finally let him out and like they were gonna kill them, but he escaped and like the uh, Lang Zhang helped him escape. And this is where like Lang Zhang and his, his like brotherly stuff starts to begin and start to bond for each other here. And they start to care for each other. And pretty much at this point now, a lot of their sector is getting, um, their sect is getting like conquered by the Wing family. So by the time we hit uh, episode 16 to 20 right there, like, you know, even, you know, uh, the Yu Ming Jing uh, sect is getting un uh, attacked. And this is Wei Wuxian, his family, his hometown and everything. And so because they're getting attacked, the father ends up tying Wei Wuxian, uh, Jin Cheng, and Zhang Yilang 
together and send them in away before they get killed and they were able to you know after they were on like the bow and they finally got free and they came back and they found out that uh wing chow has conquered their place destroy everybody and Jin Cheng blames Wei Wuxian for everything because Wei Wuxian is just, you know, he's naughty and he did all these things and it gets them upset so now they come and attack them, you know. And so he seeks for revenge and when Jin Cheng goes and gets revenge, he ends up getting caught and then Wei Wuxian goes and rescue him and Wing Nun helps him and like while Wing Chao was throwing like this banquet party to, you know, celebrate that they have taken over the uh, Young Min's um, sect, like hanging the parents' body. Oh my god, it's so bad. It's like hanging by the door. And uh, Wing Nam put like medication into Wing Chao's drink so that it would give him enough time to sneak Jin Chang out and give it to um, Wei Wuxian. And Wei Wuxian took against um, Jin Chang away. They took off to the uh, this place called uh, Yi Ling and they find he finds out that um, Jin Cheng, he has lost his um his core golden core body whatever like that so he will never be able to have like powers again or you know pick up a sword again to fight and all this stuff like that and he was going to be blind and all stuff like that you know he find out that he lost all that but he's still like i don't care i still blame everything on Wei Wuxian because it's all his fault he brings bad luck and all stuff like that you know so um what is it? They still like, you know, hate each other and he's like pushing Wei Wuxian away and everything. But like, you know, like the senior sister, she's all like, you guys have to understand more towards so uh, Jin Cheng saying that you have to understand. Parents die and it's not his fault, okay? Like there's only the three of us left. We need to stick together. We need to work things out and we need to, you know, be together so that we can continue on our families, everything and stuff like that. So they work things out. They patch things out, you know, and they try to escape and beat um, Wing Chao again but you know Subin Jin Chang gets caught again and more stupid stuff happen and he's pretty much Jin Chang now he becomes like this disabled person he can't walk he, he's blind and all this stuff like that and then uh, what is it he like passes out as he was like going to this mountain and he wakes up and he gets his golden core back and he's so happy and he's all like I can see again I can walk again I can fight again and all this stuff like that and he's like thanking the immortals and mountains and everything for giving it to him and we find out it was actually Wei Wuxian who gave it to him so Wei Wuxian transferred it to him and gave him everything so you're kind of like at this point you're kind of really fed up with the Jin Chen guy like he's so annoying like it's just like oh my god go to hell you know if I Wei Wuxian I'll be like I'm sorry I let you die you deserve it I'm sorry that's just me so at this point, Wei uh, Wen Chao has caught uh, Wei Wuxian and like, you know, they were gonna like kill him and all this stuff like that. It's pretty much, he, his cord is gone already because his golden cord, you know, when they say golden cord these fantasy stuff like that, it's your main power cord and everything where it helps you pick up a sword and teach martial arts. So when you lose that, you're kind of like disabled and everything. You can't really do anything anymore. So he, uh, he... He already given that up to uh, Jin Chang already. So this is when like, you know, they they want to um they want to like they destroy him, they torture him and uh Wei Wuxian becomes like a servant and all stuff like that and like you know he he's just they hurt him and all this stuff like that. They do all this stuff to him and then uh he's really pretty much he's getting tortured and then Wen Chao throws Wei Wuxian into like this chaos or chaos bearing pulse or something like that and he ends up being drawn to dark power and he passes out and then he wakes up like pretty much they push him and everything like that and like off the sleep and like that and then he wakes up and he has um he has summoned evil power in him so this is when <coughs> i'm sorry <coughs> <laughs> this is when Wei Wuxian returns and like you know everyone everybody thought that he got killed by Wing Chao it's like three months later he returns and he has um black pretty much evil dark power and he uses his flute 
So like, you know, during the three months that he was, you know, gone, he came back and now he can like, you know, he returns and he's more powerful than ever. Like he pretty much lost his, lost his golden cord so he can't pick up a sword to fight. So now he has this um, black flute where it helps him uh, pretty much with evil power, dark magic and stuff like that. And he can control spirits and he pretty much gets revenge and they finally kill that stupid Wing Chao guy at like in episode 20. So from episode 21 to 26 right there, many people wonder what happened to Wei Wuxin in the past three years. But he doesn't want to share with them that he has been having like evil powers in him or he got all those things, you know. They ask him a lot of stuff, but he doesn't tell them. He only touches his flu and pretty much like he has like evil spell and stuff like that. But like it's trying to like take over his body, but like he's not letting it take his body, you know. So he's still in control of his body too because pretty much once you get possessed by those evil spell, evil power, you're kind of like you go bad but he doesn't really let that happen to him so like um he meets his senior sister Chang uh, Chang Yang Li and she knows that something is different with him and she tries to like you know talk to him and stuff like that but he doesn't say anything and like when she touches his black flu it was like burning her and so she knows that that flu chosen its master therefore it refused to work for other people and it will hurt other people and so that's when she asked him about it you know but he still doesn't tell her and like you know they tell him that he should go back to picking up a sword and you know using the sword to fight again and when he does he he already lost his core power so he can't you know and when he tries to pick up a sword it rejects him and like you know it like there's like possessed powers and stuff like that around him and he can't use the sword to fight anymore so he's just pretty much saying i'll just stick to a flu and so you know uh, Lan Shang, uh, Lan Shang pretty much knows about it, so he tries to talk Wei Wuxian about it, and Wei, uh, Wei Wuxian explains to him that he controls things with music now. But uh, Lan Shang worries that if he uses it to control, it will control his mind and he will become a demon. That's pretty much what it will do to him. But he promised that he will not fall into the demon path. So Lang Shang will help him to make sure he controls it and he fights over these, you know, evil powers and black magic and stuff like that. So that he uses it but he's in control of it and it doesn't control him. So this is when like a lot of um you know puppets ghosts gets introduced and there's this guy Wing Rung Hun like he's not there there's more people from the wing family you know um they it comes and attacks other people and like he uses his puppet and stuff like that and it goes and attack people and there's like um it kills ming ming jin i don't know who that is i kind of just ignore but um, uh it killed that person and like wei wuxian and lan shang gets into fight with these people and they um they get to see uh, how Wei Wuxian uses his power or his flute to uh, to attack these puppet bodies and stop them from attacking people and re-controlling them to go back and attack its enemy or like you know let's say you know this wing guy he used this puppet ghost to attack Wei Wuxian but Wei Wuxian's flu can reverse it where these puppets will listen to him and go and attack the wing family so you know there's like fights like that and we get to see Wei Wuxian do that and you know they kind of like they're kind of like, oh, you know, he probably has the Ying Tiger Seal because it is bad spirit and stuff like that. And, you know, this is where um, everybody started blaming that um, Wei Wuxian, he has like the Ying Tiger Seal and that's why he has like bad evil stuff. And people start seeing his power. So they're kind of like afraid of him now and they're trying to get rid of him. So this is where it starts where they're getting rid of him where it's gonna show us what happened in the beginning where he fell off a cliff and there was like this fight scene going on episode 27 to 32 right here um a lot of things has happened and you know how people have been blaming that the fact that uh, Wei Wuxian is so powerful is because he has the Yin tiger seal and all this stuff like that and so pretty much they kind of like you know how their sect has gotten destroyed they kind of don't have no place to go so during this time they end up staying at the lung Lang Ling Jing sect and this is where uh, Yang Li falls in love with uh, Jin Jin Shi Shu or something like that? I don't know. And this is where like in the future she has her son Jing Jing Lang. So uh, during this time like it's it's kind of tough for Wei Wuxian so he kind of like leaves them and he meets up with Wing Qing and Wing Ning again and he starts to use his flu to you know he realized that his flu can awaken Wing, Wing Ning and throughout this episode he finds out that um 
he goes and stays out with us, these remaining people with Wei Qing and Wei Ning. He helps them, he stays with them, and he doesn't judge them. He can just be himself because he's pretty much, they kind of don't want him now being a part with the other people, like his other people, because he doesn't, like, is he possesses dark power, dark magic, stuff like that. So they pretty much, in a way, they're afraid. They're really afraid of him, but they're just kind of like all, constantly always trying to kill him. So it's, he feels like it's just best to not bring danger to them, so he leaves, you know? And like nobody comes and, you know, bother him anymore. So he just lives like uh, far away from everyone else. And like a year has passed and everybody has been living separately and everything like that. And Wei Wuxian, he receives an invitation from his senior sister, uh, Zhang Yangli, that she has had her son and it's his one month uh, celebration. So he goes and buys a gift and he goes and visit them because he's invited to the party. And on his way, Wing Nin tags along and they get attacked by the Lang Ling Zhang sect or something like that. And um, He's trying to, they're trying to stop him from going to the party and you know, his, his senior sister's husband, I have a hard time saying his name, his senior sister's husband came and like tries to stop this fight from happening but Wing Ning killed him and and when uh, Wei Wuxian feels so bad that he's like, oh my god, I just killed my brother-in-law, pretty much, you know? And like, he, he doesn't know what to do, and he's like, you know, oh my gosh, I don't know what to do. My sister is waiting for me to go to the party, and her husband's probably waiting for her, and I just killed her, and now she's... Her son has no father, she has no husband, what did I just do, you know? And then, um, what is it, um, they... Wing Chen comes and she ends up putting Wei Wuxian to sleep and so they can put him away and so that nobody knows that it was him who killed, um, it was him who pretty much killed the husband. So they put him to sleep so that they can go to the sect celebration thing to take the blame for it. And when Wu Shen woke up from his sleep and he found out that Wing Ching and Wing Nin had left to go take the blame for him, um, he goes over there and he gets into, um, this fight with them and trying to like you know pretty much tell them that he didn't do it there's other people doing it and all this stuff like that and you know there's like this big fight that happened this long talking and all this stuff like that and they told they they blame stuff on him that you know it was him who did all these killing in the past and stuff like that and he's all like do you think i would do all these killing do you think i would wait until now to kill them i'm so powerful i can kill anyone i want you know you don't have any evidence why are you throwing it on me it could have been you you know so he's really really smart and he tricks them around and stuff like that so he does that and they're afraid of them and he gets into this they everybody gets into this fight and then his sister his senior sister comes to try to stop the fight and she ends up getting killed in the process of it and she tries to stop the fight and everybody is just calling him evil because now he has killed pretty much everybody so in episode 33 to 39 here, this is where it finally brings us to the present time of where in the beginning they were having this fight and um, was it... Uh Everybody was blaming that is because he has the uh, Yin Tiger seal and all stuff like that. So he's hanging on the cliff and he tells Lang Shan to kill him, but Lang Shan doesn't want to. Jin Chan tries to come and kill him, but more so it was all fake. They didn't kill him and he just kind of chooses to let go of Lang Shan's hand and fall into, you know, the golf fall off the cliff and everything. And that ends it for us for the past and we finally jump into the future where it is 16 years later. And we get to see Wei Wuxian wakes up and it is the modern time and it is back to our original timeline and uh, Lan Shang is trying to help him pick up a sword again to get the evil out of him but he cannot. And Lan Shang decides to stick with him and then have them work together so that he can, you know, get rid of everything and solve what happened to him. And he still wears his mask so that no one can know who he is. And remember in the beginning, the reason why he survived was this guy called Mo, Mo Shang Yu who helped him and pretty much helped revive him and gave him his life. So in order for this Mo guy to... Um, what is it? This mole guy saves him by giving his life to Wei Wuxiang. So he lives as uh, Wei Wuxiang lives as mole, this mole guy, and he has scars on his hand, which this mole guy is trying to take revenge on. Until Wei Wuxiang completes the revenge, the scars will never disappear. So that's why Wei Wuxiang has scars. So if finally we go back and place into everything, and they find out more, they find out that there are other evil spirits around possessing people and turning them into evil spirits, just like how 
how the mole family was turned into evil spirits in the beginning and all stuff like that. So they start fighting evil spirits. Wei Wuxian joins them. His nephew, Jing Long, uh, tags along but doesn't know that Wei Wuxian is his uncle. And, um, Wei Wuxian calls Wei Nang to come to him and he finds out that uh, Wei Nang, somebody put Wei, something, a huge nail or something into Wei Ning's head and it is controlling him. So he finds out that there are more people who are out there and they're getting possessed and controlled it's because they have this nail in his their head. And so now him and Lan Shang are on a journey to kind of pretty much end all of this. So from episode 40 to 45 right there, um, at this point Wei Wuxian is still acting like this Mo Shang Yu guy. He's wearing this mask people because uh, many people still blames Wei Wuxian for the past and all the stuff like the way they're at even his nephew blames his uncle for killing his mother and father which he doesn't know that this Mo guy in front of him is this actual uncle Wei Wuxian that he has this hate towards and um it was like and then they we pretty much find out there was all a trap to take um uh his nephew's dad's throne so uh Jing Jing Ji Shu, whatever like that, he's actually a prince on this throne and stuff like that. And there's someone who's actually trying to take his throne and that's why it killed him and his wife. And this guy who's trying to take the throne is uh, Jing Guang Yao. And he is an illegitimate, illegitimate, something like son of the Jing, of Jing Guang Shang. And so... Uh, let's just call him Meng Yao. It's easier. They call him Meng Yao. So after setting up to kill uh, Jin Long's father and putting the blame on Wei Wuxian, he is now the leader of the Jin sect. And he has evil plan up his sleeve and like, you know, he's been secretly doing stuff and we find out that he's been keeping this ahead of the Scarlet Pick. Scarlet Peak Master with like red paper around it to protect him from getting haunted and stuff like that. And uh, Wei Wuxian and Lan Shang sends like this magic paper into it to listen to him and see, being an eye scene for them. And they find out that Meng, Meng, Yao, Meng, Meng Yao has been doing all this up, bad stuff and he's been hiding the Ying Tiger seal di design diagram and he's been doing all these bad things and he's been, you know, he's. A part of their clan and he's being treated all these things and he's just up to this evil plan and he's been planning it from day one so like he was a part of the sector i mean the scarlet peck Scarlet Peak Masters uh, people before and everybody in there treated him bad. They called him a bastard, a prostitute son and you know it, it really hurt his feeling but you know for this master he doesn't believe that they should call each other that. So he promoted Meng Yao to become a vice general his right hand man and to tell him to do better so that other can not blame him or say bad things about him. So this is like this is where his plan all started. He did little by little getting powered little by little killing people and then he killed the master he kept the head and you know he became the ruler and everything and he pretty much you know got back to his family and then he killed the prince who was supposed to take the throne so now he can take over and all this stuff like that so after Wei Wuxian and Lan Shan was able to like get all this information, they revealed the truth about what Meng Yao has been doing and before they were able to get to his chamber, chamber, you know, he removed everything like that, causing a huge, huge chaos. His wife Meng Yao, Meng Yao uh, her, his wife is Qing Shu, she kills herself and then everybody started blaming Wei Wuxian again and starting asking him to take off his mask. He did and revealed himself who he was and he was pretending to be the mole guy so now he's back and Jing Lang is so upset because he's all like, oh, he, I've been hanging out with you and this guy is the guy who killed my parents, you know, and before they can do anything, you know, um, you know, Jing Lang, he stabs like Wei Wuxin because he's so angry and like Mo Yao was able to get away, you know. So stupid. And then uh, Lang Shang uh, takes um, Wei Wuxian back to his place, just treats him, and then they give him books of strange magic powers and like that so that he can use it to fight against Meng Yao and they find out that Meng Yao has been the reason why he has been able to become so powerful was he was able to trick people and he was able to get a hold of like this music piece where he combined like these two tones where when you listen to it it seems peaceful but it was slowly poisoning you and killing you and that's how he was able to kill the Scarlet um, Peak Master and like you know because they're like it's so it's so weird this master he's so strong how did Mo Yao beat him when Mo Yao had nothing so that's why they figured out that he's been planning all these things and he's been doing bad things he's been um 
he's been like you know setting up the clan leader of the long sack you know he tricked them he got all these music she he got all these stuff so he's been behind all these stuff so all these bad things has been ha happening in the past you know killing people and doing all these things and taking over and everything it was all his doing and he just put all the blame on Wei Wuxian so in episode 46 to 50 right there oh in this episode we finally get Stupid Zhen Chan realizing, finally realizing that all these years he has lost his core powers and what is inside him, his golden power, was actually uh, Wei Wuxian's power given to him. And like he thought that he had recovered, but the truth was, like Wei Nan revealed it to him that you never recover. It was Wei Wuxian who and gave his gold core powers to you and like he refused Jin Chen refused to admit it you know but that he has Wei Wuxian's golden power and all this stuff like that that's why he was able to use Wei Wuxian's sword and all stuff like that and like he was just like you know not unbelievable like he's just still being this sour salty person refusing to believe in everything and at this they're still blaming Wei Wuxian for everything and then um they find at this point they finally go on their journey to catch up to um Meng Yao and then uh, they were able to find where he at he was at but it was actually a trap and they start to battle him but uh, Meng Yao receives secret that Jing Cheng um I was given Wei Wuxian's cord, you know, and it's kind of like hurting his pride. So they did it on purpose to hurt his pride. And then uh, Jin, Ch uh, Jin Chen still blames Wei Wuxian for killing everybody. It hurts his pride, but uh, and, but the fact that people still think Wei Wuxian is better than him, you know, it's just some stupid things. And then, you know, he's like saying all these stuff and he finally goes, you know, he repent for his sins and he's sorry and he finally is going to forgive Wei Wuxian, you know, that Wei Wuxian is such a nice person. He doesn't understand why. When he's blaming Wei Wuxian for everything, you know, it's still stupid. If I am taking this long to repent and realize everything. So as it went on, you know, they were able, like everybody was there trying to catch Meng Yao. They were finally able to get him to confess for his sins and all these plans that he's been doing, you know. And he's on his knees begging them to, you know, let him go. It's because he received a threatening letter years ago for him to do all these stuff. And if he was not going to do it, he was going to get killed. More and more talk about his past and how he was able to, you know, Meng, Ye, Meng Yao, he was doing all these things trying to get meet up to um, you know expectation and he pretty much tricked them and he uh, took uh, Jing, Jing Wang as hostage so that he can pretty much you know run away and then Wing Ning comes in and he's getting possessed and they're kind of like confused of why he's getting possessed and he's running around with the sword in his hand and this sword belongs to the Scarlet Peak Master and Wei Wuxian whistles and um, wonders why like Wing Ning isn't responding to him you know because Wei Wuxian kind of in a way he can wake up Wei Neng from his possessed and stuff like that and then Lan Shang said it's because the the sword is the spirit like possessed and it is going into Wei Neng's body to pretty much get back at Meng Yao for what he did in the past and so Wei Wuxian finally got his flu back so back then he kind of like lost it and then they took it for him and then they find, like he's been using like this bamboo fake one kind of way which it's not like fully powerful to him and they finally give him his real black flute back and so he uses it to control Wei Neng to wake up and from his possession and um he Wei Neng tells him like he doesn't know um he doesn't know what happened to him the sword was controlling him and it controlled him and it kept controlling him and he was able to cut off um Meng Yao's hand and Wei Wuxian blew the um flu and make the blade go back into the coffin this is where Meng Yao dies and like you know the scarlet peak master he was finally put to peace and everything like his spirit went away he was not going to possess them anymore because he came back pretty much just to get Meng Yao to reveal everything that he was doing and everything like that so since they solved everything that Meng Yao was behind all of this in the beginning they all go back to their place their sect and everything like that and Wei Wuxian separates himself from everybody and he finds out that all the scar in his body has disappeared and now he's no longer the um the mo guy anymore and he's completed all the revenge for this guy and he can now finally go on his journey and you know everybody goes separate way and um what is it? Um, Wei Wuxiang and Lang Shang goes separate way, but Lang Shang decides to follow Wei Wuxiang, and it ends there. My overall thought, to be very honest, I skipped around a lot, so as you guys can tell, I didn't give you guys much 
on it because I just watched certain parts here and there, get to the main point. I really didn't care about the other stuff. Uh, my sister was really, really into it. She loved it. She watched it raw and then she watched the English subtitles. So there's some parts that was missing I didn't understand. I asked her and she explained it all to me. Um, honestly, to me, I really love Wei Wuxian's costume and his character in here. And I really like how uh, Xiao Shang was able to play him really well. I've only seen him in Oh My Emperor with uh, playing um, Zhen Chang's uncle there, you know, and I didn't expect him to be able to play this well, you know, so I do hope he has more characters coming out soon and everything like that. Like, um, I didn't expect him to be able to play Wei Wuxiang's character where he's more playful and childish and they can be manly and all this stuff like that you know because of how his character was portrayed oh my emperor you wouldn't expect him to be able to play something like this but he was able to play something like this and um it was really nice you know um i actually really love their costumes their you know the stuff they have their powers and their swords and the story behind it and all this stuff like that i really i just really like wei wuxian's story period so i like him i pay attention more to him a lot like in the book it focuses on the two of them but like i don't know to me long chang's character is kind of dull and boring like just how he looks like or how he's supposed to play like so i didn't really care much about him besides um, watching Wei Wuxian. His character was more interesting than Lan Shan. But um, yeah, that is it. I'm just giving you guys a short review, a recap of um, the ending and everything like that. And if you guys have not checked it out, do go ahead and check it out. Um, if you guys want to binge watch through it, go ahead and watch everything. As for me, I just kind of skipped around and watched the main points and stuff that I wanted to watch. But um, that is it for this review and I will see you guys next time.